What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to be talking about tangent lines and we're going to also learn about a few different tangent theorems. So, we have a new definition here um, where we have that a tangent line touches a circle once at the point of tangency and creates a 90 degree angle with the radius or the diameter. So, um, here in this example on the left, we have line L over here. That is a tangent line to our circle and the point of tangency just means like whatever point wherever that line intersects with our circle, that is called your point of tangency. Now, if a radius or a diameter are drawn in, we know that our tangent line is always gonna be perpendicular. It's gonna create a 90 degree angle um, with that diameter or with the radius. Now, um, in this first example, we have that radius and the diameter drawn in, but if we look on the right side over here, um, we kind of have a circle that we start blank with, and you guys will see this in a second when it restarts. So we have a circle, um, and we are drawing a tangent line. And right now, we don't have any radius, we don't have any right angles, but all we know is right now that this tangent line touches our circle once, but we do know that if we do draw a radius or a diameter in, we know that that angle that's formed is going to be a 90 degree angle. Okay, so you might not see the radius drawn in, or you might see a diameter drawn in there, um, but just know that if there is one, that it creates a 90 degree angle. So um, we're gonna go over an example just using that tangent definition. Now remember the biggest part of that tangent definition, or the two bigger biggest parts is that your tangent line touches your circle once. This is gonna help you identify it in a diagram, um, but also that we're creating a 90 degree angle with that diameter or with the radius. Now. <clears throat> I say that it's important It's important to learn our definitions because if you know that a tangent line touches the circle one time, you can easily identify that in this diagram that segment OB is not a tangent line, right? Um, <clears throat> because it touches our circle once, but if you extended this line, it would then touch our circle two times. So with your tangent line, you should be able to extend it indefinitely in both directions, and there should still only be that one contact point right there, and that's called your point of tangency. It's important to know this because we're going to learn about different lines um, as we move forward. So you have to know your tangent line is outside of the circle and it touches once. Um, so we have in the diagram below, BA is tangent to circle O. And it's important to highlight and annotate because when we learn about a bunch of different segments, you have to know what is what. We also have radii OA and OC are drawn, and OC is an extended to intersect BA at B. And then it says if BA is 15, OB, which is this whole thing, is 17, and it wants us to find the measure of the radius. Now we know that OA is a radius, so really it's it's looking for the measure of OA. Now, um, it tells us that BA, which is right here, is tangent to our circle, and we already have a radius drawn, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw a right angle in there because we're likely going to use that fact. Now, a lot of the times when you have a question like this, when you're creating a right angle, you're gonna use the fact that we've created a right triangle here um, and if you notice, we have a right triangle, and I'll redraw it for us. We have a right triangle with x, 15, and 17. So this keeps repeating. It keeps coming up, but we can use Pythagorean theorem here. So we do x squared plus 15 squared equals 17 squared. Um, and then you just can, can do your algebra here to end up solving for x. And whatever you get for x, that's going to be your value of your radius. So we're not going to go through the algebra of it. Um, but again, when you have a tangent line, make draw your right angle, and you might see a right triangle in there. And you might be able to revert back to Pythagorean theorem to help you. So... <clears throat> More specifically in this lesson, we're going to be talking about tangent lines that are drawn from the same external point. So we're just going to talk about what that looks like first. So in this first example here, we have tangent line DC and tangent line BC, but you can see that they both meet at this same external point, right? So that is a simple example of what tangent lines look like when they're drawn from the same point, but we can also have it in a more complex diagram like this. So um, I keep telling you guys that in these diagrams, it's really important to be able to pick them apart. So for example, um, we can have that AF, or this, we can have that this tangent line and this tangent, this line or tangent, right? And they're drawn from the same external point A, but we have a lot more going on. So in blue, right, we can take a look at 
this tangent line and this tangent line, and we can see that they meet at the same external point C. And then even up here, right, at, at point B, we can see that we have a tangent line drawn from B down here and a tangent line drawn from B down here. So there are three different examples um, of this case in this second diagram here. And again, sometimes highlighting it will help us see what's going on, but we're going to be able to use these properties three different times in an example like this. Um, and then in this last one, we have the same exact thing, right? So I like to start from the external point, and I'll go from there. And it kind of really helps you see what's going on. So from T, we have two tangent lines. From O, we have two tangent lines. From E, we have two tangent lines. And then from A, we have two tangent lines, right? So what we're really going to be talking about in this lesson is we're going to talk about how to find segments and how to find angles when we have tangent lines drawn from the same point. All right, so theorem number one is going to talk about finding the lengths of different segments when your tangent lines are drawn to the same external point. So getting right into it, tangent lines that meet at the same external point are congruent. So um, in this example over here, this is a picture example of the theorem. Um, we have tangent AB and tangent BC, and we are meeting the circle at points A and C. Now, if this is the case, right, you can see that our tangent lines are meeting at this point B over here. Um, so if this is the case, we know that we can use the theorem. Hey, I know um, that this segment over here is going to be congruent to this segment over here because they're tangent lines that are drawn from the same point. Now, this will also hold true um, even if your tangent lines are extended a little bit. Right? If our tangent lines are extended, we only use this theorem from our external point to where our tangent touches the circle. So notice, um, even if our lines, the purple lines, if, if our tangent lines are really long, we're still, we still only know about this portion of the tangent and this portion of the tangent. Right? It's, it's from the external point to where we meet on the circle. That portion is going to be congruent to this portion over here. Okay? So sometimes marking these as congruent will really be helpful you might have side links that you can put in there you might be able to set up an equation um, but make sure we have to commit these theorems to memory so let's get right into an example so in the diagram below a b b c and a c are tangents to circle o at points f e and d respectively now these points f e and d we're going to mark them because they're going to be important because we can see there's a lot of different tangents happening here um, and clearly like if you just take a look at this segment over here right, we can see that that tangent line is being extended beyond F. So I know that point F is going to be important, um, and it kind of looks at this example over here. So we have AF is equal to 6. We have CD, which is uh, over here, is equal to 5. Um, and we have BE, which is here, is equal to 4. And it wants the perimeter of the entire large triangle ABC. Now, in this case, we have a bunch of different tangent lines. So I'm going to go ahead and use my highlighter, and I'm going to try to, like, create this little situation that we have going throughout the picture. So right now, I know that um, I'm going to start at point A. So point A, um, I have two tangent lines meeting there. So I know from AF to, uh, to AD, I know from this theorem that these two segments are going to be congruent, right? Now, if we take a look at external point C, I know that from... CE to CD, I know that those segments are going to be congruent from this theorem. And last but not least, we have external point B. And if we do BF to BE, I know that those are going to be congruent as well. And again, this is all from the theorem. And if it didn't tell us that these lines were tangent lines, we would not be able to do that. But since we have that information, we are able to use this theorem. So let's go ahead and fill some stuff in. So I know AF and AD are both going to be 6. Um, I know that BE and BF are congruent, so I know that they are both going to be 4. And then last but not least, we, it gives us that uh, CD is 5. This should be blue. And then so I know that EC is also 5, right? So always go back to the question, what does it want you to solve for? It wants the perimeter of triangle ABC. That is this entire triangle here. So we need to figure out each side length. So we have 10 here. We have 9 here. And we have 11 here. So we do 10 plus 9 plus 11, and that gives us 30. So the perimeter of AB's triangle ABC equals 30. Now, again, highlighters really help us here. If you don't know the theorem, though, you're going to be left in the dust. So these theorems, we have to start studying them, remembering them, so that we're able to do these questions sufficiently. 
Now, the second theorem, same exact idea. We're still going to have tangent lines drawn to the same external point, but now we're going to be talking about finding angles. So the external angle formed by two tangent lines is equal to half of the difference, um, which is going to be subtraction here, of the intercepted arcs. So in this example right here, um, it says, again, the external angle, which in this case, the external angle is going to be the one out here, the one that's formed at the intersection point of your tangents. It's equal to half of the major minus the minor. So um, in these cases, again, when you're trying to find intercepted arcs, think back to inscribed angles, right, and central angles. When we wanted to find the intercepted arcs, we highlighted the pieces of the angle. So if you highlight the pieces of the uh, exterior angle, we can see the two points of the circle that we're touching, right? So what that means is we're touching the circle at D and B, so we know that the first arc we are talking about is going to be this piece over here, and the minor arc is just what's left. So the only portion of the circle that's left is the portion between the two points on this end, right? So you do, it's half of major minus minor, or if you want to rewrite it, it's really going to be half of the big arc minus small, half of big minus small, okay? So getting right into an example here, uh, two tangents to a circle, and again, knowing that the lines are tangent is really important here, um, form an external point and intercept a major arc of 300 degrees. So I know, right, um, my tangent line is meeting, my tangent lines are meeting the circle at points B and C. So I know the first portion of the circle we're talking about is this arc between points B and C over here, and then I know that the other portion is the other part of the circle between points B and C. So it says that major arc BC is 300, um, and it wants us to find the measure of, of the exterior angle. It wants us to be able to find this. This is what we are looking for, right? So sometimes we're going to have to use our prior knowledge here. So I know that if major arc BC is 300, I'm able to find what minor arc BC is. We know that if we go fully around the circle, that we get 360, which means if I have 300 degrees between this major arc over here, I know that this arc has to be 60 degrees, right? So rewriting this uh, formula here, we have exterior angle equals half of, I'm just going to write big minus small, and I know that it's talking about the arcs here. So our exterior angle is what we're looking for, that's x, equals one half, our big arc is 300, minus our small arc, which is 60. And it helps to rewrite this equation, because sometimes there's going to be weird things, you don't really know what you're solving for, so rewriting the equation will really help you here. So one half of 240, and that would give us that the exterior angle is 120 degrees. All right, so just a summary of these tangent theorems here. So remember the definition of the tangent line is important, and this is something you have to remember. We have that it touches the circle once, that's a big part, um, and we have that it creates a 90 degree angle with the diameter or the radius. Um, and then if you're looking for segments when you have uh, tangents drawn from the same external point, you have to use this theorem here. And if you're looking for angles or arc measure questions, then you're going to be using this theorem and this formula right here. And remember, just be mindful of these complex diagrams. You want to make sure you're using a highlighter to kind of separate and figure out each different pair of tangents.